welcome, 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 welcome. Um, I'm happy to say, you know, let me take a sip of water. I am, I'm good. I have gotten a lot of feedback, a lot of positive push to do this. Um, this is the airport podcast. Uh, you know, the airport is a company that I partner with, um, that seen the vision and because of the Corona, uh, you know, the whole COVID-19 has been a little delayed. So we gave a soft release that we was going to do this in like June, July, but it's so many people that are calling me that are like, yo, punch, we need you to speak on this. We want to hear your opinion. Um, and just so many people just pushing me to be a voice in the culture and get this podcast out. So without further ado, I go, all right, let's do it. And then I get a call from my brother Shadi yesterday. Then I get a call from Crippy. And I get calls from, you know, uh, from some of my people that don't have voices and they like, yo, punch. If you're not speaking, how can I angle or how can any other perspective be heard? So it's just, it just pushes me more and more and more to just get this podcast moving. Um, it's the airport, you know, your thoughts start somewhere and they end up anywhere in the world. That's the motto. Take off with me. Episode one, airport podcast. I'm Punch. You know who I am. If you're already here, welcome. I appreciate you. But let's dive straight in. The culture's in a frenzy. Um, and I feel like I'm one of the only people that can add some clarity to this. Um, every time I look on the internet, I'm getting tagged. Every time I look at a media outlet, I see a post. And we are all, we are all victims, <laughs> and 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 we're all being forced to just watch this Takashi Six Nine debacle go on. Now, for the little kids, let's address you first. Um, and a lot of them like to be like, "Yo, but you used to be cool with him. Yo, you used to be this." Takashi was one of my friends. Takashi was one of my closest friends. You know, I have been able to have toured the world with him. I've been able to have seen tons of places with them. We did some really, really amazing uh, career accomplishments with one another. But just like a bad relationship or a bad friendship or anybody that does wrong, we don't just get unlimited do-overs. A relationship is supposed to be upheld to the standards that you want to. So uh, when Takashi decided to cooperate, um, I just couldn't be cool with him anymore. Uh, and a lot of people, we're going to give tons of clarity. I'm going to call some people out. I'm going to open your eyes to a lot of things you're probably not thinking of. And we're going to add clarity. Um, Takashi is using a lot of the tricks that I taught him. Like I've done digital marketing. I've studied it. I've read up on it for years. I've done so much on digital marketing, controlling media and changing the narrative uh, you know, he's become an expert at this. Very Donald Trump-esque, to be honest. Um, but let's jump straight in. Um, my perspective turned very simple. I knew this simplistic notion that where that there's this person, this man, you know, um, that joined a gang. And it made me change my perspective about who he was when he went against that gang and the vows and the morals and the code of conduct that you voluntarily choose to live by. Now, a lot of people, you know, when we're talking about the snitching thing and the cooperating thing, we got to understand this simplistic notion. When we're speaking about snitching, okay, the term snitching is already a slang word, but when we're talking about snitching, it's talking about telling on someone that you did a crime with. That's what snitching is. Every time that Takashi now, as of late, starts talking about snitching, he blurs it extremely quickly, just as we taught him, to change the narrative and to make the argument about what he wants to make the argument about. And he continues to put loyalty as his narrative for snitching. See, loyalty is loyalty, and snitching is snitching. Now, snitching, if someone did a crime with someone, man A and man B did a crime, Man A gets away with the crime, man B gets caught. If man B then tells on man A, that is snitching. Cool. If man A goes off, gets caught, and he tells on B, that's snitching. Cool. If man A gets away and decides to steal all the money from man B, man B still can't tell on man A because that starts to get about what, like, his sense of loyalty. See, that's that word. 
It's close, but it has nothing to do with this. Snitching is a very simplistic, simplistic decision. It is a decision that people who play in the streets, whether you join a gang or whether you just believe that you're street or you want to be a gangster, whatever you choose to be, snitching is a very simplistic decision. And that decision is, I vow and I promise and I give my word that no matter what goes on, I will never involve the police. That's how gangsters and street dudes interact. You see, if you do something to me, I'm going to do something to you. So that means like this. I want to give an extreme, an extreme scenario. If I seen my number one enemy, my arch nemesis for you kids, you know, the arch nemesis, the villain in the story, because some of you kids that are really getting brainwashed by this need to understand this more than some of the adults, clearly. If I see the person that I hate the most in life, he's coming to shoot me, gun in hand. I see him. And luckily, the police saves my life. I hear the sirens come. And that guy takes the gun, throws it into the garbage. Police comes. Hey, what's going on? We heard someone had a gun here. You know where it is? When the police asks you if you know where the gun is, you know what you're supposed to do. Now, this is the person you hate. This person was, if he did not hear the sirens five seconds before, he would have put a bullet in you. You have to say, I don't know where the gun is. I didn't see one. I don't even know who this man is. Now, for every single person that goes, this is stupid, who would do this? You're not street. And I don't want you to be. I don't suggest you be a gangster. I don't suggest you join a gang. Because if you think that that's stupid, then you're not a part of this. It's a simple decision, which I want to give that narrative and give whatever asterisk you need to hear. Do not join a gang. Do not play in the streets. It's actually a terrible decision. You're only going to end up in jail or dead. Okay, you will only end up dead or in jail, jail or dead. This is a fact. Okay, cool. Now that we're there, the people who are crazy enough with enough heart to say, I still want to be street and I want to live by this code for those people and those people alone. I need you to understand this. They signed up for that voluntarily. So when they see their enemy, they don't cooperate with the cops, whether they see the gun or not. That's just not what it is. So every time that Takashi continues to go, yo, they weren't loyal to me. They kidnapped me. My baby mom. They did all of these things. Every time that you see that, I need you to understand that he's already mine. He's already, he's already switched you. He's already moved the card. The magic trick has been completed. Everything that we taught him, he's done. He's just using the skills now for evil. But in reality, it's very Donald Trump-esque. You ask him a direct question that, it, that deserves a yes or a no, and he'll give you an answer. See, certain questions are, are why, like, like, did you snitch, yes or no? His first thing is, yeah, but. We don't need but, sir. We don't need anything for that. You're the lowest form of a human. For the simplistic, simplistic decision that you decided to join a gang. You decided to play in the streets, and this is what came from it. See, the only thing about you is what? You just didn't want to go to jail. You didn't want to take responsibility. So now instead of you owning up to that, all you do is point fingers. Let me remind y'all, when Takashi first went to jail, he knew all of the information, that they allegedly was with his girl, that they did the kidnapping, all of these things that he says, he knew. But you know what he did? He said, I'm not cooperating because they didn't have jail time waving in front of him yet. The feds first approached him. He didn't want to cooperate because that's who he was, right? Now, when that little thing called jail time started waving and he started throwing numbers at him. See, this is another thing that I hear everybody. Yo, would you do jail time for someone? No, 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 no. Takashi was never going to do jail time for anyone but himself. See, Takashi got himself into things. Let me remind y'all, I was there tons of days. I was on tour. I was in the clubs. I was everything. But I made different decisions. That's why I was never a part of the indictment. There's not a paperwork on me. No one said anything. There's not anything on me. My record is clean as day. I'm loved in the streets. It's not even the, it's like the towns, gangsters, rappers. I get my respect. And I get my respect because I stay exactly who I am. I'm never trying to create this character and try to be Superman or try to be super gangster when I don't need to be. That's something that he tried to portray constantly. Let's pull back again. So for the people that continue to go, yo, would you do time for someone else? No one was going, he was not going to take a charge for anyone because that's what that is inferring. Would you do time for someone? He was not going to take a charge. When the robbery went down, Takashi's already taken claim and, and, and guilt for recording the robbery. 
He's already said, hey, that was me. I recorded it. You're just as guilty when you're at the crime. It's like the getaway driver to the robbery. You're a part of the robbery. See, we keep trying to just change this because we all want to change this narrative because he's a kid. Oh, good point. He's not a child. At the age of 19, as I found out at the end, because Takashi lied to our face over and over and over, just always telling us, yo, I never was a part of this girl thing. Yo, it's all a lie. They frame me. Yo, it's all a misunderstanding. But when this case came out and he had to admit guilt, and we found out that Takashi, at 19 years old, decided to engage in sexual activity with a 13-year-old. See, these are game-changing things. But nobody knows that until it's time for the court. Like, you got to remember, I mean, it's straight up and down. And this could be for our own personal ignorance or whatever. But we couldn't pursue it because it had a minor involved. So it's not easy to get that type of documentation when there's a minor involved. I want to just remind people with that. So when he used to dare people, yo, type my name, you won't find anything. It's because he knew that there was a minor involved. So the paperwork wasn't as available as everything else. Smart man. Very, very smart. Another checklist for the manipulator. See, I just need y'all to understand certain things. And when you start to understand and break down who the person is, because I know him well. I was around him all the time. Fun guy. But he's looking for this social acceptance constantly. So he's always performed in the personality that he feels like he needs to be, which is this tough, aggressive, I'm about all action. And which is why he was the aggressor in most of the issues that um, the team usually got into. It's because someone's an aggressor. You get what I mean? The gang, the gang that's around him realistically is just so excited that they were outside of the town. Gang is not on town. They're not feeding the fight. To be honest, gang is trying to chase girls. They're trying to chase money. Because those are the two things that they didn't have feasibly available for them in a small neighborhood. Once you're in a neighborhood and you're on gang time, you're not going to other neighborhoods. So you're not seeing that many different types of girls except your neighborhood because you got beef. It's just reality. Some of my gang friends, <laughs> some of my friends, and I say this painfully and almost embarrassing, some of my friends have never been on a plane. Some of my friends is in their 30s never been on a plane. Some of my friends have never left. And if they went on a plane, they went to Miami Memorial Weekend. They ain't going nowhere. No diss at none of my people. I'm just being authentic. See, again, if y'all don't understand this mindset and this type of person, again, it's not for you to understand. So stop trying to understand it and just come to the awareness that there are other people that don't operate like you. See, there was a person that tried to operate in a world that was above his means. He tried his best to be like, yo, I want to be this gangster, yo, let me in. And no matter what any gangster and any gang member told him, he decided to go against them and do what he want. Like, I'm looking at Billy Otto and Seiko Billy, shout out to my dogs. I'm looking at the interview, and it reminds me, they just did it with No Jumper, and it reminds me so much how many times everyone was telling him to chill out, and he ignored. Ignored, 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 ignored. So much to where... Even in, their, even in their interview, I think everything he said, 90, 95% of shit was 100% accurate. But I think that the other side of this that he might not even be aware of is a lot of times they were like, yo, shoddy this, shoddy that. I was there a lot of times where Takashi would literally go, I don't want to be around this dude no more. He, had, he didn't have enough heart to say it and then would make shoddy turn out to be the bad guy and have to be the one to enforce it. Then a lot of people look at Shadi different. Now, this isn't to defend Shadi today. I'm not getting back and forth. But I'm just saying what I've known to happen. So Takashi is good for, nah, bro, hit me tomorrow. Yo, bro, do not answer the phone for son. He keeps asking me for bread. I don't like his vibe. And I just used to just be like, yo, this is crazy. But I'm not gang. And that's their gang issues. So I leave them be because he was a part of their gang. So leave them be. I see it. I still... I still interact with all of my people the way that I interact with them because our relationship was different than how he did. I'm like, all right, cool. That's how they interact. That's how they do it. Fair. As we progress with this whole mindset about, yo, would you do time for people? Would you not? For him changing the narrative every single time about loyalty. Let's get down to something that left me probably the most confused out of everything. Now... When he was on live, and we love crediting and giving everyone all of the awards 
Like, yo, look at how much views. Yo, look, views, 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 views. That's basically us going, look, he gets more attention than I do. I don't know when this happened to our world and to our culture, but attention should not weigh more than respect. Attention should not weigh more than respect. Some of us are so caught up on getting views that we forget how easy it is to get views. I remind you, artists come to me all the time, Punch, how you think I could go viral? You know what I tell them? Why are you trying to go viral? They're like, yo, I just need views. I said, well, you should try to secure fans versus trying to get views. See, if you want to get views, I suggest anybody right now, go into the middle of the street and just start pissing. Start pissing. Go in front of all the cars and start peeing in the street. Go into a store right now and knock everything off the shelves. Go into the store and start screaming. Go places and start yelling. Everyone will look at you and you'll get views. It's not that difficult. Boom gang. Used to get views. He'd go into a restaurant, take something, and just run. Views. <laughs> Even he's frustrated with his own past. Shout out to John Gabbana. You've grown. I respect you, bro. I just got to look at what goes on. People keep confusing attention for respect. That guy had got 2 million people looking at him. Now, before we get to what he's talking about, <laughs> we got to think about, think about this. They've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing. Applause to Universal. Applause to his label. They literally have done the best marketing I have ever seen in my life. That is not one ounce of sarcasm in my bones. I have never seen better marketing than what they did with 6 9 in my life. They made a kid that created his entire image about being a gangster and being street that everyone hated for him being aggressive and street and starting beefs and being arrogant and not listening to anyone's advice. Fat Joe gave him advice. Pub Let's talk about the public advice. 50 Cent public advice. Fat Joe public advice. Charlemagne public advice. Ebro public advice. A million people gave public peaceful advice. Like, yo, bro, you should chill, man. I don't know if you really know what you're doing, but you should chill. Plus, the 8 million people that did it on a private level. He ignored everything. That person that y'all all hated, I was there. We thought it was amusing. We did. But the reality was, was that once it hit the fence and now responsibility is to be taken for those actions, things are different. See, for the whole last, from the second he went to jail, we've not heard him speak once. We've saw one picture of him out of jail hugging his girlfriend, and we've not heard him speak one time until that Insta Live. But yet, for a year and change, we could not go a week without a brand new Takashi headline. It's amazing. Up, Universal, I applaud you. Like, I lit it. Who was their PR team? I applaud you. Who handles their press? I applaud you. I am not saying this with sarcasm. You literally did your job flawlessly because you made the world's most hated person turn into the world's most loved and, 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 and cared for victim. Y'all did this so much that y'all made the whole world go, I feel bad for him. You convinced the world that he's a child, even though he got arrested when he was 22 years old. There are people that are 16 that get given life. You could be 16 years old and legally get 25 years to life in the country of America at 16. But he's 22, and y'all still manage to convince the world that that kid is a kid, that that man is a child, that that father who has a child is a child himself. Amazing, universal, his PR, whoever it is, you deserve a promotion. I applaud you. You did a fantastic job. So when he walks into this Insta Live and we see record breaking numbers, they've worked for that for a year and a half. They've promoted him speaking for a year and a half. They just gave a, the date a week before. But we all were just anticipating every single headline. One other thing that y'all did fantastically was that y'all did uh, an amazing job at covering up certain parts of the case. And this kind of gets me to where it burns me the most. So, women, 
my sisters, I love y'all. Y'all are amazing. Queens, mothers, aunts, cousins, however you want to, like, bosses. I'm confused at how women are still supporting this kid. I'm lost. See, this is going to now be the part where people are going to have to own up to their behavior. Now, I look up to this woman. Super inspiration to me. Um, Amber Rose. Uh, I love Wiz. It's one of my super close friends of me. I don't know A. I love him. Respect. Genius minds. You seem super genuine, super down to earth. Amazing. Just personality. But when I was seeing Amber Rose in the in in the comments, and I seen a couple more girls, I saw Juju, I see Natalie Nazi, I see Wovic, I seen some girls, I seen some Insta models and stuff. But when I seen Amber, especially Juju, these girls, it made me really understand, especially specifically Amber Rose, because I want to just Amber Rose is this advocate for women, which is amazing. Again, that's really the true reason what made me look up to her. I have two sisters, I have a mom, I have everything, and what you do for women's rights is it's levels ahead what a lot of other people can. But it confused me when I saw you in the live and you were championing him because I don't know if you know, maybe you're unaware, but that man's already admitted to being a, like a, a woman beater. This is like on case. So again, I'm just confused at who's the 6 9 that y'all love. See, I found out all of this confirmed, confirmed out of his mouth, not like anyone else's. Not deemed by the court, but by that man's mouth that, I, I, you know, like, um, let me let me just read this quote that it is. Hold on, let me just read something, because I just think that, yeah, and I want to get it exactly how it was. Um, a section of 6 ix cooperation agreement with the government listed a number of crimes that he committed for which the government agreed, agreed to not prosecute him. Basically, once he said he was going to snitch, the government then worked with him even more to say, no matter what you've done ever before this point, we're never going to allow you to go to jail for any of that. Cool. It also states that Hernandez admits for domestic violence from 2011 to November 2018. As such, any accusation of domestic violence cannot be brought up during his testimony. Let me get this right. This man admitted to domestically to domestic violence for seven years in a row? Like, uh, like shout to Sarah Molina. That's my friend. I consider Sarah like a, a real close friend. I've spoke to her many, many times throughout the world. I've been to Finland with Sarah. We've been on airplanes. We've seen some amazing things. Super amazing woman and a mother and a young woman trying to do her thing. So I was so confused at how people, especially a juju, these are women that I got a high amount of respect for. And then I thought, let me not blame those women. Even though I would love to hear what they got to say about supporting it or if they'd continue to support such a person. You get what I'm saying? Like, if they would support such a person that openly admits to beating women. Because, again, I had to do the Google so that I could understand. Because Amber Rose is the, is the champion, the developer, the uh, inventor of the slut walk, or at least the main face of it. And when I Googled the slut walk... It says, the slut walk is a transnational movement calling for an end to rape culture, including victim blaming and slut shaming of sexual assault victims. Specifically, participants protest against rape or explaining or excusing rape by referring to any aspect of a woman's appearance. Now that by itself, Amber, I love you to death. If I have a daughter one day, people like you are going to make sure that it's a safer world. So I love it. But how could y'all represent or you specifically, or any woman for that matter, understand how difficult it is for y'all to fight against it and be supporting a man who's openly said that he's beat women for seven years. Sarah's already said that he raped her and beat her. When Sarah put out the pictures when they were in jail of her with a black, and a black eye, lip busted, everyone's seen these things. She's admitted, and then he's then taken guilt for it which you have to applaud that marketing team because they have managed for us to find out that he was more scared of COVID than to remind us that he beat a woman for seven years in a row. Magic PR team. <laughs> Magic. I pray that there's no women on that PR team. If there's women or if anybody over there has any daughters or sisters, but I know everybody over there probably has a mother, so I hope you're proud of your work. Because you're, you're 
You're defending someone who's openly beat a woman for seven years. And again, there's domestic violence that goes on and on and on. There's so many different variations and so many things. And then there's people that get accused of it. And we, and we film and we, and we dirty them up. And they're not even guilty yet. But this guy took his own guilt. So he said, all right, cool, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I beat her for seven years. And then in the exact same live, which is yet another thing of the slut walk, which blew my mind, Amber. And again, I hate to just hang you like this because like I said, I, I really, really got such a high amount of respect for you and what you do, but you represent such a large amount of women that it blows my mind, Amber, or any woman in that life for that matter. He's slut shaming Shara the entire time, whether it is real or not. Yeah, y'all fuck my baby mother. Since when is it cool to talk about a woman like that? Like we've all done it childlike but as an adult you know better so what if it's honest slut shame and if it's not slut shame, it's disrespectful how is he on a live in front of two million people devouring that woman's whole identity and morale she has a daughter their daughter has to then look at the live which her father is then saying yeah my yeah your mother fucked this guy like come on women Every single woman playing that song or in that live, dropping an emoji, doing all of this. Where's your self-respect for your peers? Where's your self-respect for your fellow women? Because God forbid the tables turn and someone starts slut-shaming you on a grand scale. How can you recover from that? When the person that's doing it controls two million people on an Instagram live. How does it feel when a woman then would see a person that they'd probably look at as a queen and as a boss... Again, you can be in that role, Amber, because you speak for this. How can they look at that woman and be like, yo, this is cool. How can we support the guy who's openly done it? These are the answers I need, and I mean it in all respect, because I really want to open up the conversation, because I love the woman rights. I love it. Equality for everyone, and 10 times more equality for women of, of, of any type of minority. 10 times more. But these are the questions I want answered. If you're a woman working Takashi's record, I want answers. How are you comfortable working his records? Again, this is not a rumor, guys. See, if this is a rumor, I'll be a lot more delicate. Yo, let's see what happens. If the guy continued to claim innocence, I would still go give him a chance. Maybe they, they railroaded him in court. Give him a chance. But he said he did it. He said he did it. What is it about a song that could be so salacious and so alluring to you that you could ignore abuse for seven years? But if anyone in here, Juju, Amber, Woe, Vicky, anyone, any woman in there that feel offended, if you were unaware of this, I apologize. I'd still love to hear it. And I know that your fans and other women would still like to hear what statement you have on the position. Now that we know that this is a position to be commented on, or women that work at Universal, or any woman that work anywhere up there. Like, for that matter, because if you're a woman that has to market him, you still have to look at him like, yo, he's beat the, the mother of his daughter for seven years. He slut-shamed her every single day he gets on a platform, he slut-shames her. Allegedly, for an alleged situation. Whether it was free or not, I don't think that any man on this earth owns any woman. So whether she decided to do sexually... I'd like to think that that was her actual free mind and free spirit to be able to do so. So again, and I mean this in like the most genuine way, I want to have the conversation and I want to just understand, you know, um, what's the position? See, I know where my culture stands. See, this is another thing that everybody got to understand. There's the masses and there's the culture. Okay, there's the masses, there's two million, there's the masses, there's the kids, there's the millions of people that are watching. It's clearly that millions of people don't see it how they might should. I personally think it's a control of marketing dollars because most people don't really understand what happened. And most people are already brainwashed by what they feel like snitching is or what should be. And they're already brainwashed with the whole narrative that the world had, which is, yo, um, yo, why would I, why would I be loyal to someone who did so-and-so to me? And that has nothing to do about snitching, you know? So I just got to sometimes remind people of all of these amazing, 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 you know, ways and flips that he has, you know? Because th there's this thing that he posted. 
If they kidnapped you, stole from you, slept with your baby moms, threatened your mom, stole millions from you, caught on the phone trying to kill you, would you snitch? <laughs> None of that has to do with snitching. None of it. He's, he knows how to switch the narrative. <laughs> I applaud him. He used to listen to the team meetings. Smart kid. But I'm ashamed of it all, to be honest. I'm ashamed at the Donald Trump-esque behavior. See, Donald Trump, as Takashi, have very, very clever ways of maintaining multiple positions on an argument. You know, um, I've seen people ask Donald Trump simplistic direct questions. And he literally, instead of going yes or no, he finds a way to put the third. He's a magician. Now, I don't want to make this political. I don't want to lose anybody with this. But when Takashi goes on live and goes, yo, I apologize. Yo, let me, let me say sorry to my fans. Like, it wasn't worth it. When he says that. And then fans can go, look. <clears throat> and his fans can go, look, guys, he's remorseful. Yo, let's give him a break. And everybody's like, yo, give him a break, man. He's remorseful. And then the next line he goes, yo, but you bum-ass rappers, I got four Richard Millies on. <laughs> what narrative are you trying to paint, bro? If you are aware, now he's looking at all the statistics he's arguing about Billboard. If you are aware that 90% of your fans are children, why are you not moving better? You just was in jail for a year and a half. It's time to take responsibility for you as an adult and literally go, it's time to move better. Like, look, I did all of the foolery. I didn't get killed. Thank God. Look at yourself in the mirror. You didn't serve the rest of your life in prison. Thank God for you. Cool. At what point do you then go, yo, I got to change. I seen Charlemagne say something that was it's groundbreaking. He said, he said, this kid is going to end up dead or in jail two years ago. He said, if he doesn't change, and he said, he's already been to jail. What's next? Now, when you go in these house arrests, instead of chilling and relaxing and being like, I'm so thankful that I'm home, that the judge granted me the Corona, you know what I mean? Release. Thank God. Look at you. Y'all did well. Shout out to your lawyers too, right? They did a good job of getting you out, but you're only home because of Corona and you're not being humble. That's why I'm, I, I, these are the reasons why I'm frustrated. You did this jail thing. You snitched on everyone to come back and be arrogant. You snitched on everyone to come back and try to be a piece of shit to them, to try to stunt on them. See, who are the people that you want to stunt on? Because you in that live with 2 million people that are clearly your fans. Who are you showing all that money and jewelry for? See, as I speak for the culture right now, we don't care, bro. You'll never be at our lunch table again, kid. You're not welcome. So you could be the most popular kid in the school and you'll never be at the cool table again. See, this is the point that burns you. See, y'all think y'all know Takashi. I was with him every single day. <laughs> See, y'all think y'all know him. I was with him every single day. Y'all think y'all know all of these people. I was with him every single day. I know him. He lives and breathes for social acceptance, not from the masses, but from the elites. See, some people understand what I'm talking about right now. There's some people right now. See, this is the whole thought process, right? Some people right now go, yo, if I had a million dollars, I'd be so happy. And there's some people right now that don't even care about a million. They just wish that their ex would see them with $10,000. See, it's not about what the end game is for some people. It's just about how they can make certain people feel. He doesn't care about the masses. He doesn't care about the numbers like that. He only uses that to try to troll the elites. Pay attention to him. Watch him. Every single time he opens his mouth, he's going to reference someone with a large name so that it can tie into a headline. Every single time he speaks, he will tie in someone with a large name while he speaks so that it can tie into a future headline, i.e. 
in that live, he had to put Drake's name. He had to put Tory Lanez because he doesn't just want to stand alone and be happy with his success. He wants his success to be compared to an elite. If the people that are in his live were the ones that love him already, why is he still trying to claim innocence? He's already proven it to the people in the live. The live was supporting him. But he doesn't want the support from the live. He wants the support from the cool table. Danny, my old friend, You'll never be at the cool table again, bro. I know it hurts you, but that's a decision that you made. See, you have all the money in the world. You have more money than a lot of rappers, but they have respect. <laughs> Don Q said, how does it feel to have all of that jury? Shout out to Don Q. How does it feel to have all of that jury and never be able to go outside and wear it? That burns you. Jimmy Boy could put 47 other chains on your neck until you look like Mr. T. You could look like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz covered in jewelry head to toe. And you will never be at the cool table. 160 million views, Danny. Whether real, whether bought, whether authentic. You will never be at the cool table, Danny. You were there. You know what it's like. You see the girls, the money, the respect. The cool table is a cool place to be at. Follow us. Live through us. You'll never be there again. <laughs> so as you go through your life and trolling the elites and trying to get the Ebros and Charlemagne's, the Adam 22's, the big boys, all the elite media personalities to pay you attention. All the media outlets that love being your second, third, fourth, and fifth Instagram accounts. Applaud them all. You could have all of that. But I repeat, Danny, you'll never be at the cool table again. And that burns you more than anything. I know you, Danny. I feel sorry that this all turned out like this because your impact put so many people in jail. Your behavior put so many people's life at risk and it's affected so many families. <laughs> all of these things, I put people's family in, I put their kids through school. <laughs> Daddy, <laughs> I know you, man. Don't lie like that. Those, those dudes are in jail. Crippy, Crippy has a bullet in his stomach because he tried to protect you. Shotty's doing 15. You know? Harv not even sentenced yet. He was trying to be a good road manager at one point for you. Kuda B was doing anything he can to stay afloat. Doing his music, doing what he did. You put that man in and implicated that. You do what you do. You're, you're, you're an interesting guy, Danny. Ish, Roe Murder. The Jack Boys. You put a lot of people in jail, Danny. And you love referencing these, they took money. I want to ask you a simplistic question. He said he got money taken from him on the Breakfast Club. A week later, they were all indicted. Who had that money? Because, I mean, I know that you're hinting that Shadi took all of the money, but Shadi got indicted the next week and they said he had 70000 in his account. So you trying to tell me that the same gang leader shoddy that y'all all call him is also like bank fraud and, and like money launderer? Like like bank money genius dude? So he stole a million dollars, you said? Shoddy figured out where to hide a million dollars? <laughs> is that what you're telling me, man? <laughs> Some of y'all believe so often what you read on the news that it sounds ridiculous when repeated back slowly. See, everyone is going to be like, yo, Punch wants the clout, Punch wants this. You know what I really want? It's not the clout. I want another C word. I want the clarity. I'm tired of the confusion. These are the C words that I want. It's not the clout. Clout's going to come. 
I've been in this culture 10 years plus. I done broke a million dollars. It's going to come. Keep getting clout. Nothing's going to stop. He can't stop me. It's, nothing's going to happen. I help make them. I help build them. And clearly, I know how to destroy it if need be. But that's another comment. That's, that's just, let's just call that another conversation. I want clarity. I want people to understand what's going on. So I plead. I just want people to understand. Just know what you're supporting. Women. Women, 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 women. You might just not have known. So let's all consider this your moment of clarity. Now you know. So now the stance needs to be taken. Women, mothers with daughters, the same way that y'all persecute R. Kelly for being abusive to women in a different level of abuse, different type. You got to look at all the abusers the same especially the ones that actually take their own guilt for it. See, Sarah's as light-skinned as they come. Y'all seen it. If y'all Google it, and I hate Sarah, I, I, I apologize if this reopens wounds for you, baby. I, I, and I apologize. But this guy is, is so abusive by dragging your name constantly and trying to uh, shame you and be derogatory to who you are as a person and as a mother it just makes you be that person to where that we have to address sometimes. So I apologize because this is sensitive things. Like if anybody here has ever had a woman in a family that's been abused, you'd understand my tone and understand how sensitive this is. And understand that when Meek Mills is writing and being like, yo, y'all don't pay this attention. Yo, y'all got to understand that this is coming from people that understand what's going on. Meek from the hood and understand what it's like to have to go to jail for not doing nothing. Or going to jail for something that you shouldn't be in jail for. Meek's also been in jail. I see certain people talking. There's a lot of people that have been in jail. I guarantee you that probably every single person that's watching this video should at least know one person that's been in jail. And known that at least at one point they've been in jail or been in handcuffs for a false reason. I want you to think of that exact thing, right? Think about that, right? And think about every single person that's then done guilt. And I want you to weigh it. The people who were innocent and the people that were guilty. If you were innocent, they should free you. And if you were guilty, you should what? Own up to your crime. So if that is a simplistic notion from every single person that's watching this video, why don't y'all want this man to live up to his crime? Why is it cool that he could literally, in exchange for living up to the responsibility of him going to jail for what he needs to, that he then implicated other people in crimes? I pose a lot of questions today and I want a lot of answers. I want a lot. I'm expecting to see an outpour from women that are now like, whoa, Google it. Daniel Hernandez, domestic violence, Google it. Again, this is not a rumor. See, rumors are bull. Rumors are whatever. Rumors are whatever, right? And I want if he decides to get enough heart to respond to this, I want him to respond to the specific topic. Don't Donald Trump me, Danny. Don't bring up anything other than the simplistic point of you admitting domestic violence. And how could you feel comfortable being the man that you are, being guilty of domestic violence, as you should be trying to raise a daughter he has a child in Europe. He has another child in New York that he's not claiming. He's popping out babies left and right. He has a daughter that we know is his. He beats that baby mother. This is the guy? This is the guy who wants to be number one on Billboard? <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And it just end this if we talk about a Billboard just for this, for being in this culture for a while. Billboard is an assessment of American stats. Okay? It's not about what you do in Asia or Europe, South America or Africa and why you end up on Billboard. Billboard is an accumulation of statistics, spins, views, shows, performances, all of that in America. So you might have the biggest numbers in the world at the moment in whatever time period that you're trying to scale it against. But do you have the biggest numbers in America? We're not sure. So if you're not number one on Billboard, stop trying to cause a little fuss and change the narrative and complaining and whining. 
It's not cute, Daniel. What are you? Are you the aggressor? Are you the tough kid that you said that you were? Are you the victim that got taken advantage by the gang? Are you the guy who's apologetic? Are you the one with four Richard Millies that's stunting on everyone because we don't have money and you do? Or are you the complainer that's mad that Billboard didn't put you number one? Danny. <laughs> who are you, Danny? I'm just trying to understand. And in closing, let's talk. Let's open dialogues. And shout out to every single person that said that they were going to stand tall and far away. And the second that the money got close, they found their way right back. We all see you. Danny, follow us, man. We're going to go have a meeting at the cool table. Shout out to Meek Mill. Shout out to Snoop Dogg. <laughs> shout out to everybody just speaking up. Understanding what needs to be said so that our culture gets educated. Gilly the King. Wallow. Charlemagne, Ebro, just the people that's talking the right things. Because we need a lot more smart narratives than the ignorance. Shout out to Wayno. Common sense is out there. We're just ignoring it way too often. But it's the airport, first episode. So why not talk? Why not get into it? Your thoughts start anywhere and they can land anywhere else. Take off with me.